Hello and welcome. Today's video is one of the coolest days of my entire life and I'm proud to bring it to you. I finally got to drive an Arvard historic vehicle. The Stug 3 is not a tank, but an assault gun. The difference is in the doctrine. We could probably do an entire video on that and an entire video on this particular Stug 3D, but if you want to learn more for now, this is the historical reference I recommend. Uh, this is from the new Vanguard series by Hilary Doyle and Thomas Jens. If you don't know, they are two of the preeminent experts on German armor from World War II. If you are lacking their works in your collection, I recommend you remedy that. So I put a affiliate link to Amazon where I got this book down in the description below. I'll keep today's video to the drive experience. One word before we start, some of the footage is in a lower resolution because it is the recorded version of a live stream that I did because I originally wanted to capture the whole experience live, not only so they could come with me, but so that I could see some of their questions and that me and Josh could answer them. So I've edited that down a little bit and uh, I've supplemented it with some other camera views and stuff. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. I'm Joshua Huffle. I'm the chief mechanic here for DriveTanks.com uh, here in Uvalde, Texas. We've got the Stoke 3 D behind us. Again, a lot of you are going to recognize her from uh, Tank Fest, uh, the War and Peace show. John used to parade her around all over the place. And a lot of you are going to uh, understand that it doesn't have the original HL120 in it anymore uh, just because a lot of them don't exist. They're expensive, they're hard to find. and for what everyone else was doing with it. It just wasn't practical to have an original engine in it. Uh, so this one has the K60 Rolls-Royce uh, diesel in it. The biggest thing we've been fighting is John did an amazing job with restoration on it. He did a really good job for what it was doing in the northern area of the world. Uh, but here in Texas, it has not enjoyed the heat at all with us. Uh, so I had to make some adjustments. I added a, a big old oil cooler to help try to get a little bit more life out of it. And then we had to go through and painstakingly uh, wrap the exhaust, trying to get a hold of the heat that builds up in the engine compartment, uh, just because it, it's in a box and it cooks itself. Today is the first test to kind of see how it, how it handles those modifications and see if we can get it around the course. Uh, the good news is we did go ahead and order a new motor for it uh, as of yesterday. So. For those that are interested and want to continue to see its, its ongoing upgrades, uh, we're going to be doing an entire engine swap on the thing. So it, if you're interested in the mechanics and the idea of you know putting something a little beefier in it, something that will run a lot better, uh, follow us on uh, Instagram. We'll be doing live streams on there and we'll be posting up pictures and and progress of the Stug and its repairs. So this will be available for guests of drivetanks.com to drive and uh, someday to shoot, and uh, that'll be pretty wild. So we're gonna give yeah. you a little bit of a sample of the action. And so here we go, but here's the top. Our engine hatches are open for as much cooling as possible. So getting in from the commander's position on this side, and I'm gonna head down. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the stuck. Move the seat forward a little bit? Uh, actually, that is where it's committed. That's where it's at. All That's right. where it's committed right now. That? That's fine. It smells diesel -y. A little bit. So, up there is our driver's position. Now, uh, John ended up putting in the uh, FV432 gearbox up front. So, the steering kind of system switched from the old style brake system that they had. So, when he put it in, uh, they actually ended up having to flip how the sticks performed. So if you actually want to turn left, you pull the right stick. And if you want to turn right, you, you, put, you pull the left stick. And that's something that we'll address as we go along because that is going to be very confusing for people that have never driven it. And that's kind of the whole point of why we wanted to bring it here was we want people to be able to come out and enjoy it and drive it and experience a little bit of it. So uh, you have your control sticks up front. Um, just to your right are your gauges. There you go. The gauges there, uh, thank God they work because they are our telltale uh, signs for everything that's going on with the motor. Our big issues that we have to watch is temperature 
and oil pressure. And that's it. So here you can see fuel. This is our RPM and our speed. There's our temperature right there. Yep, temp, and then you'll have uh, oil pressure. Those are the two big ones that we just need to keep an eye on. Okay. And what about this uh, one on the side? What is this one? Uh, that is amperage. Okay. So that's telling us if, uh, if the alternators are charging up the batteries. Mm. And then um, fuel, you know, obviously it's not it's not an original fuel tank, so the sensor's going to be all over the place. That's exciting. We have our main switchboard uh, for power, our fans, um, ignition, starts. Uh, next to us is, it's a original uh, radio stack. My poor gun that was cut to meet ATF standards. <laughs> Those guys are jerks. So if you look over at your shifter there, because we need to reverse out of the building. Um, you're going to pull that little tab out that's sticking out the side, mm -hmm. and then you'll pull it back into reverse. And then, you think that's enough, but underneath that shaft, the, 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 uh, the drive shaft there, mm -hmm. there's a little cable linkage that you see on the other side. That. That cable. And pull it towards the front. And pull it towards the front pull it forward, and then it goes into reverse, and then it's happy. After that, you don't have to touch it ever again. All you have to do is worry about uh, using the actual little shifter, and it's fine, and it's happy. Okay. Uh, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, what on the gauges do I need to watch as we get going? Because you mentioned that, so our oil pressure is something to keep an eye on. Yeah, so, so always keep an eye on the oil pressure. Coolant, I'm not too worried about. Okay. It's the oil pressure that I, I'm most concerned about, because once that starts to drop, we are officially overheating. Uh, that panel is actually from an Abbott, so that is its panel taken right from the vehicle because they basically just took all the guts, they took the engine, they took all the distribution boxes and the wires and just found a way to mount it all into here and converted it basically over to an FV433 but with a Stug body attached. Normally that would be okay, but the front sprockets are about 5 inches bigger than an Abbott's and that's where we run into the problems is it doesn't have the guts to turn that great mm -hmm. big uh, that great big front sprocket so that's why we need more power and since technically the engine that we're putting in while it is more powerful it is smaller so I can fit you know another radiator and I can fit more fans and um, that hopefully then will never overheat ever ever again and one of the reasons why it looks roomy is because there isn't any supplies in here. None of the ammunition or... We do have a fire extinguisher for safety reasons, but the gun has obviously been cut down quite a bit. Um, once you actually start to flush this thing out, there's like no space at all. Compared to like, uh, if you've seen my videos with the Jagdpanzer IV, that is a much roomier... There's... It, you can see some light coming in. There's a hatch here that is deceptive. <laughs> in the sense that uh, there's absolutely no way that a grown dude is gonna have a good time getting past these, past that, with his whole body out the hatch. Excellent. All right, you got me? I got you. Okay. All right, to start up. Start right. up.
did in a minute. Because I got whacked. Yeah, all right. All right. Um, so we survived. We survived the stug run. But um, after one of the turns, my left stick stopped giving me, it just went slack. So I lost steering and he's like, pull off the gas. And I pulled off the gas, but we pulled off the course. What happened was a pin sheared somewhere along the steering mechanism over on the right side. Went to go try to fix it, try to get in through around the gearbox and we're trying to get that hatch open, but my little fruit fly arms couldn't open the hatch. We're gonna go back out there, get the hatch open with a tool and go in there and fix that. So it's a pretty easy fix from what we could see. Nothing super crazy happened. Our temp stayed good. I was really starting to get the hang of it going. Like you gotta, you gotta give the throttle, um, a push at the right time when you're pulling the stick. Got to pull back with the stick with the right force and I was kind of getting it and it was amazing. We did not crash into anything. The stick stayed good. Didn't start at any fires. The tank yeah. is still upright. Like yeah. lots of, <laughs> it's just slightly I, I off the course. I have to imagine it is hard to flip a stick though with how low it is, that low center of gravity. Sounds like a, sounds like a challenge. <laughs> Everything was going good, you know. Um, our main, obviously, concern was oil pressure and temperature, and both of those were holding as we got around the course. And that, that, that's just what we were having to look for. Here you can see the two pieces that came apart when the little link broke. Once we got in there, Josh knew what to do right away when he saw it. So we went back to the shop and waited out the heat of the day and then came back over. Josh fixed it up and we drove it back. Why did we wait? Well, it was so hot out there that my boots actually broke. Standing on top of the stoke melted the glue. It's too hot to touch the metal on top directly with my hands. This is just a super tiny taste of what the boys had to contend with for real out in the North African theater. Fortunately, it was a quick fix, so when we drove back to the shop, we had no other issues. It performed so well, and I got the hang of applying the throttle at the right time for the little turns. On the way back, I got real comfortable with it. It did so well, and it drove um, surprisingly smooth. Being an automatic probably really helped, is my like idea. Like I think that because it was automatic, that helped everything go really smoothly with the turns and with everything, so. Don't miss out if you can. Add this to your bucket list. Driving is stug. You're not gonna get that experience <laughs> anywhere else. Thank you for watching. After being a tank dork since I was eight years old, the experience of being able to get behind the sticks of a World War II AFE was absolutely incredible. I am beyond thankful to Josh and to drivetanks.com for the opportunity and the experience, and it's my pleasure and pride to share it with you. Mr. John did an amazing job restoring this vehicle and getting it up and running and then to share it with the world. It's great that this one continues to be in the hands of people who care to preserve it. Despite the little fracas of partway through, I felt really safe throughout the experience. It seems like a small thing, but as we know, tanks are not toys and things can happen, but I felt comfortable in the hands of professionals. Josh himself is a veteran and served as a tank commander in the US Army. His instructions were very precise and very concise so that my little newbie ass didn't get confused or mixed up. I was able to just focus on the experience. I'm glad I didn't break it. <laughs> I was afraid I would break it. <laughs> I highly, highly, highly recommend the experience out of drivetanks.com. Get yourselves out there when you can. Experience the Stug and a ton of other AFVs, pun intended, I'm not sorry, as well as a bunch of the firearms and stuff that you may have seen in some of my other videos or around the net. Follow them on their Facebook and Instagram. I've linked all their socials down below. Catch up with some of the action and adventure as well as some of the vehicle upgrades that they make along the way. I could really get to speaking about how this experience made me feel but that would already make this video longer than I want to watch. So for now, I'll let this be. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any other questions, uh, leave them down in the comments for me below. And myself and Josh will answer your questions about the vehicle or the experience or drivetanks.com and its collection. If you liked the video, toss it a like and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you next time for some more military history and armored adventures.